Good morning. Happy Thursday, March 28th. I don't think, I, you know, this may be the last last day of the quarter. I don't know. I mean, is there one more day of the quarter? It doesn't matter. The cues in this quarter, <laughs> I mean, if you just go back to January, um, you know, January 3rd, 2nd, somewhere around there, we were selling for $405. So if you take the cues and you look at $405 and you go, that's 10% that you're up in, in, in the first 90 days of this, this, uh, this, this year. It's a pretty good, you know, listen, for an, uh, uh, the cues, that's great. Are you going to get that out of the second half? Uh, according to Tom Lee, probably. Uh, but you know what? Tomorrow, let's just talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, the markets are closed. You will not get a podcast tomorrow. But tomorrow, we also have PCE data and Powell speaking at 11.30 a.m. What's he talking about? Well, here, this is a Fidelity article that I said. Investors on edge with consumer inflation data due Friday. Rate cuts hope uh, hopes to hang in the balance. So this is what Powell will probably be talking about is PCE and are they going to raise, blah, 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 the whole thing. Rates are coming down. He's going to be talking about the markets are closed, so you can't trade. Simple as that. There's going to be news, and you can't trade. Uh, people are nervous about this. So expect today to be a little bit of maybe a downer. People may be taking some profits. Uh, I won't be trimming. I won't be buying. I'm sitting there, and I, I'm not doing much of anything today. Today is your Friday. So I, I look at the MACD on the queues. Uh, you, it's, it's crossing down. The RSI is at 55. You still have a positive 200. You still have a positive 50. Is there any reason to get out? Probably not. But if you're in a trade, uh, like TQQ at the beginning of the week, I might get out. Uh, you don't know what he's going to say. May not be worth it. You know, again, four day week, a three-day weekend, you're holding TQQQ, you're holding a triple levered ETF, probably not worth it. But you can read these articles in the newsletter. Uh, one thing that I was saying about TrendSpider, uh, it's got a limited time sale. It's on for today. They'll probably extend it over the weekend, but don't wait. If you're going to get it, do not wait until tomorrow. Get it today. It's $595. Uh, but one of the great things about uh, TrendSpider are the alerts. So here's, I went over yesterday how I go up and down on the, the brokerage portfolio. Today, I'm going to tell you, I set up alerts as well. So on the four-hour algorithm, I have most of my stocks that are over 5% more my portfolio. I have alerts set up in TrendSpider. Alerts are included in this. So what happens is I set up an alert with the entry on the four-hour so that I get a, an alert for the entry on any stock that I'm looking at. Okay, send me an alert. It sends me an alert when the algorithm says, hey, you know, the, the alerts come in at 1230 and four o'clock. At 1230, I get a bunch of alerts. I go and look at the stocks. I can look at it on my phone, through the TrendSpider app. I can look at it on my computer. Whatever I'm doing, I can interrupt my day and do that. At 4 o'clock, same thing. And if it tells me to get out, I make a determination. So one of the great things about TrendSpider are the alerts. You don't have to sit there and stare at charts all day. I tell people all the time, TrendSpider is like a charting program on steroids. It takes emotion out of the trade. It is unbelievably good, so make sure you're getting in on this sale. It's $595. If you can't justify that, uh, you know, I had three people email me yesterday. Is TrendSpider really worth it? My answer is yes. I am not putting bullshit on this podcast. I use this every day. So if you ask me, is $595 worth it to me? Absolutely. It's a Herculean task. If you are just learning charting, uh, do not buy TrendSpider. If you are just learning technicals, Go and get a free program. Go to my link tree and get Weeble and download their desktop software. It is free. Just place $500, $200 into Weeble. Get the app, but get their, uh, their, their desktop software. Learn charting. Learn moving averages. Learn Bollinger Bands. Learn MACD. I talk about it all the time. Learn RSI. Learn everything that I see on my screen. Uh, then learn how the uh, how the, uh, the the stock charts move. Find your favorite stock 
and study it for three months, six months, but study the moving averages, see how it moves. Do not jump into TrendSpider if you don't know charting. If you do know charting, TrendSpider is the greatest charting program out there in my opinion. But if you don't know charting and you don't understand technicals, take some time to learn it. If you just jump into TrendSpider, it might be overwhelming. Again, it takes a long time to learn this stuff. I've been doing this for years. But if you are trading with charts, there is no reason why you shouldn't be trading with TrendSpider. If you don't want TrendSpider or if you're just learning about investing, then go to my link tree and sign up for the second one. That's uh, Seeking Alpha Premium, 25% off your membership. That's what the link gets you. It, it's a Easter sale, spring sale, they're calling it. It is unbelievably good. I talk about the quant all the time. And if you're really new to investing, my suggestion would be Alpha Picks. Alpha Picks is the third link down there. And this one, it's just two stocks. You're going to get one next week. It's two data driven stocks. They give you absolutely um, the, the, the uh, analysis. If you go over here and I look at Alpha Picks, these are news articles that come out every month, every week. They tell you when to sell, they tell you when to buy, and they tell you the exact stock. Their performance, 130% versus the S&P at 38%. You'll hear, if you just Google how many hedge fund managers beat the S&P in a year, go and Google that. How many S&P managers make 130% uh, over 38% S&P? Go and Google that. You will find out how good that performance is. So there are links here for everything that you need. These are the tools. I don't want you emailing me, by the way, and saying, hey, uh, send me your four-hour algorithm. When you haven't signed up for TrendSpider, understand there are douchebags out there who have emailed me over the, uh, the past few days and said, send me your algorithm. I can't. It's proprietary. Come on, that's like saying, hey, there's a plumber out there on the front of my lawn and I've got a plumbing problem in here. I bet he's going to come in and, and fix that for free. Come on, come on, douchebag. It's an, it's a, and by the way, it's not like I'm going to send it to you. I send you a link. You have to sign up for TrendSpider. I have to sit, you have to sign up for TrendSpider. I'm not going to send you my stuff. You can t I give so much on this podcast for free. That if you don't understand what a, an algorithm is, if you don't understand that it is basically a charting program that back tests against here, QQQ makes 24% over two years. Uh, you are in and out, what, 24 times, once per month. You make 20% with buy and hold it. Go and buy and hold it. If you can't afford transparent, just go and buy and hold it. Qs are, are, are that good. It's just as good. If, if you're trading MicroStrategy, you better understand charts if you're trading MicroStrategy. This one will move on a dime. My algorithm makes you 868%. You could pay for TrendSpider if you just invested in MicroStrategy. Buying and holding makes you 277%. There's 22 positions. Currently, the algorithm's in one of the 300% gains from, uh, looks like January, the end of January, 300% on MicroStrategy. It's huge against Bitcoin. Uh, if you want to, you know, look at MicroStrategy versus, we can just look this up on, on uh, Seeking Alpha because this is what you can do. MicroStrategy, let's look at it. You know, charting, we'll go to the charting. We'll we'll do this against Bitcoin. Uh, we will select symbols and we will get rid of the S&P and we will do BTC. That's Bitcoin versus the US dollar. And let's look at MicroStrategy versus Bitcoin. Look at it. Just look at it. We can say year to date. Look at it, six months, look at it, one month. As long as Bitcoin's going up, MicroStrategy is beating Bitcoin. That's the key to MicroStrategy. It's a levered Bitcoin. To, they basically take out loans. That's what it is. So understand, these are the tools that I use. These are the tools that I have. I'm not going to give you my hammer. I'm not going to give you my, uh, my saw. But if you sign up, I do give it to you. It's free. It's just a link. It comes in and it's free. So, you know, sign up for TrendSpider, uh, sign up for Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha, I don't need to give you anything. I can give you guidance if you ask me to look at a stock. I can give you all that. I give you so much for free. Why are you a douchebag and you email me and say, give me your algorithm? No, sign up for TrendSpider, douchebag. And, and everybody knows who I'm talking to. The people who are listening who have emailed me over the past week know exactly who they are. Douche. Yeah, don't get me started. I'm, I'm on a roll. 
Uh, four stocks to watch on Thursday. Walgreen Boots, they announced they're slipping. They got taken out of the S&P. This is a loser of a stock. Don't get into it. Home Depot. Home Depot has been on a legendary tear. They just made an acquisition. Uh, we'll go over it in a little bit. But this one has been on an absolute tear. I think it's down a little bit. Again, when a company announces, no, it's up a little bit. But when a company typically announces an acquisition, they're spending money. So the stock will typically go down. Now, Home Depot has just been, I mean, look at this since the October lows. We're going to take this and we're going to drag this up. The October lows, Home Depot is up 36% since the October lows. That is crazy for this big of a stock. If we look at a weekly, it's extended. You can see we were trading in this range. I said during the, this time, I said this is the trading range that you want to trade in on the weekly. When it gets down here, it's probably going to find support. It did find support and boom, it's taken it out. Where are its highs? It's here in December 2020, uh, 2021. That's at 400. You're at about 416 at the highs. So you still probably have that in the stock. It's a good stock with good uh, good earnings, good management, good products, and and they're expanding into the uh, they're expanding their pro, which basically is the growth portion of this company, by acquiring this uh, this little um, contractor business that's in Texas, and it's not so little, but that's exactly what they're doing. So that's it. Um, yeah, PLTR. We'll go into that. They were downgraded. They're moving as well. Uh, IWM. Uh, IWM, I posted in the Facebook group uh, yesterday about how if you go over here to Seeking Alpha and you just look at market data and you take a look, they're going to tell you uh, today, look at that. There's the Russell 1000 LGLV. There's the Russell 2000 and SMLV. If you want to trade these, you can. The Russell 1000, the Russell 2000, the S&P 600, the S&P 400, the S&P 500. They're all there. Uh, that's the the low volatility U.S. equal weighted U.S. They give you all of these fundamental U.S. They give you all those um, momentum. You can look at the market data, and it, it basically outlines it for you. It's really good, and it gives you all of the symbols that you want to look at. Now, what happened yesterday? We'll look at SMLV up two point three percent. That's the Russell two thousand. So remember, Tom Lee said that IWM. Uh, will go up 50% from here to the end of the year. It was up 2% today. Uh, Trendspider is saying Mr. Wyckoff would be proud. This is what's called a Wyckoff distribution. And, and essentially, you can see, this is exactly the chart that's happened with the IWM. Is yesterday a uh, IWM? Remember, IWM benefits with uh, reduced uh, interest rates. That's why it's dangerous to buy it before Powell speaks because maybe we don't get rate cuts this year. There's been a couple of uh, Fed officials out there who have said, hey, um, uh, you know, we may hold for longer. We may not reduce rates this year. That would be bad for IWM. IWM long term, if we take a look at a weekly on this one, it's the Wyckoff. It's just sitting there and it explodes up. Now, November, October 2021, November 2021, you got to your highs at 244. This is the only index that hasn't done it. Uh, so if Tom Lee is right, we're getting a 300 on this one. That's what he's basically saying. Um, so uh, Altimeter Capital, Brad Gerstner, he was on uh, CNBC yesterday, he made some news. Uh, he says the wheels are starting to change for Alphabet. I've said Alphabet. GOOG is the one that I suggest you buy because that's the one that Alphabet buy, Alphabet buys back. Um, I've said 150. 150 is your, is your point. You're over 150. Uh, it's starting to turn over a little bit. The MACD is a little bit high. Just buy it under 150. If it gets to 140, just buy it. Again, you know, you got a thousand dollars to put in, and you want to put it into uh, Google. Just buy two hundred dollars of it when it dips under 150. And then when it gets to 140, <clears throat> you can buy $200 more. When it gets to 145, buy $200 more. <clears throat> Let me take a drink of water. I was busy screaming at people. <clears throat> it gets me worked up. But yeah, Google, uh, you can read this article on the newsletter. Newsletter is free. A a again, you know, the douchebags and the freeloaders, like Lucas says, the freeloaders out there, I, I give this stuff away. The newsletter is free. Go sign up for it. Dailystockpit.substack.com. I'll have this article on Google. The other thing that I want to uh, show you 
is uh, altimeter. He talked about Tesla. He's bullish on Tesla. Um, I would tell you, Tesla, and I've been saying this all the time, I think Tesla, um, I think you have to wait until the uh, the deliveries are announced next week. I think Tesla is going to disappoint in, in the uh, in, in the uh, in the, the, the deliveries. Their earnings, <clears throat> I think China's going to come into play. Uh, I think China's slowing down. Uh, if you got in at 172, you're starting to turn over here. It's at 176. I'd be really, really worried about their earnings that are coming up on April 17th. Um, uh, I, I wouldn't be in this one round now. Honestly, I'm thinking about maybe buying TSLQ uh, because this is the the uh, bear, and it's you know algorithm just got you out with a 2.54 percent. Again, in TSLQ over 20 months, it hasn't been around 24 months. Over 20 months, uh, TSLQ in the algorithm 16 positions. So not even once per month, you win 56% of the time. This is a bearish stock. So essentially, the bearish one makes you money. A, a TSL, a TSLA is, is bearish. Your average win on this is 13%. I do think that this one is going to turn around. Look at that MACD. It's down here. Again, this goes against Tesla. You haven't wanted to bet against Tesla. I would just be worried about those deliveries. Those deliveries may be weak. And if we see weakness, this one could go down to the 140s. I do think that it's a, over $200 stock and I want to play you a video. And this video is of FSD 12.3. And this is where uh, AI is taking, uh, it's basically making decisions based on AI. It's not the 100% the visualization uh, right now. It's it's AI. It's trying to uh, act like a driver. And and we talked about it yesterday, how Elon Musk has said all 2 million, 3 million Teslas out there will have full self-driving uh, free for 30 days. They are going to train this model so well. It's going to be the most data that any other car company has ever gotten off of cars. And that's where I think Brad Gerstner is saying, hey, we're bullish. He bought more yesterday. He thinks that the launch of this stuff is going to be game changing. He's taking a drive <clears throat> in Tesla. Uh, I have this on my card. Just downloaded it last night. I will try it out this weekend. But this is this is interesting. Again, this is look at that traffic. Now, what happens is the y light turns yellow. Look, it automatically notices that the other cars were running the yellow. That's impressive. Again, compared to what this this the, the old software has done, this is super impressive. And that's why Brad Gerstner is saying, hey, Tesla might be a good buy. I just would uh, worry about the deliveries next week being low and, and essentially pushing uh, th that stock down. So Snowflake, one that we've been looking at, uh, CEO Ramaswamy buys 5 million shares worth. Uh, stock popped. I think it was up 5% to 163 or something. Uh, we can look at Snowflake. It's at 162 right now. It is up 1.27. It's putting in that capitulation. Algorithm got you in at 165. I started adding at 165. I did not add down here at 154. What I want you to trade this with is the weekly. And this weekly, this weekly, you're in this range. You're back to this range between 127 and 198. Does that mean you don't add here at 165? No. Ramaswamy is a great CEO. The transition was not very good, but again, I'm just adding, and then when it gets up here to 200, I'm trimming. I'm not trimming everything, but I'm, I'm basically getting my position ready. I do think that this is a good stock to be in. I think this is a good one. Again, Brad Gerstner talked about this one as well. Home Depot, we talked about it. They're buying this SRS distribution, $18.25 billion deal. It's basically going to open up the Home Depot Pro stuff. This is a good, good deal for this stock. Um, RH Hardware. Uh, this one was interesting yesterday because uh, Restoration Hardware announced um, their earnings they went kind of crazy, and, and we'll take a look at the chart. Um, but here's RH Hardware. Let's. This is the uh, biggest movers of the day. 
RH Hardware, despite missing market expectations, RH uh, rose 8% on the prospect of improved performance in home furnishings business. Demand in Q1 expected to grow in the positive mid to single digits. This was an interesting one because I'm going to take a look at the after hours on this. We're going to go into a uh, trend spider here. We'll go into a five minute chart and I will do extended hours um, because I want to show you right now the market is open. It has opened up. So we're going to look at extended hours. I want to show you the reaction that you're going to see to earnings. This one, this is the five minute candle right here. This was a 1.56% decline. It got all the way down to $270. So I want to show you what 10 minutes uh, uh, of the world would be. That is 10 minutes, okay? This is five minutes. That's 15% in five minutes, a 15% swing in a luxury goods. All it took was uh, the, down at the end, uh, the, the, the guidance. That's all it took was the guidance. And look at it taken off. Now, if you want to look at the weekly on this one, this one is still under its 200 day. Are, are luxury goods back because it's 675? If we look at restoration hardware in Seeking Alpha, <clears throat> um, it's a hold. The valuation, pretty big. But if they're going to grow, this one may be a good one to, to get into. I don't know. I mean, you know, again, it's been beaten down. Uh, our house is uh, number one. And that's, uh, that's a strong, it's a buy in uh, the quant. It's a strong buy from Wall Street. You know, we know from Steve's talk, take Wall Street with a grain of salt. Uh, the d average price target is seventeen dollars and forty cents. There's eight strong buys on the street with this one. Uh, the valuation is a D plus, um, and we look at that peg, the forward, to D. So I'd say stay out of it. But restoration hardware was interesting yesterday. Uh, I wanted to point out that uh, oh, let's look at GE. I have a note in my um, in my. Uh, here to look at GE because I wanted to show you a weekly of GE. Um, here in the algorithm, algorithm makes you 154%. Buying and holding makes you 144% over 24 months. That's what I want to show you is how crazy good uh, GE has been. And we just want to look at, you know, let's take a look at January because January 2nd, we were down here at, at 60, looks like it opened up at 65 the year. I mean, so far in just one, well, that's 2023. Let's get out of there. We're going to look at 2024 because 2024 started out right here. Let's see, December, January 1st. Here in 2024, it opened up at 127. So we're going to move up to 127 and we're going to look at that. That is up quarter to date, what, three months, let's say, yeah, two months, three, 40%. This is GE. This is GE. This is an industrial. This is what's driving industrials. And so GE went absolutely nuts. It's one of the biggest winners uh, of this year. Still strong. In the four-hour algorithm, uh, we're in a run. Uh, it, it, again, industrials have just been going on a run. Look at that. I mean, look at this one. This one is up. Uh, that's from January. You can see 154 days. Uh, let's see. There we go. Yeah. That's crazy. That's just nuts. Uh, but I wanted to take a look at that one. Um, let's go back here. Super micro. Uh, I wanted to point out it was a hold. It moved from a buy to a hold with Seeking Alpha Analysts. Now, there's 12 authors in the last th uh, 30 days. What Seeking Alpha does is they take Seeking Alpha Analysts and they say, okay, how do you rank this one? Uh, is it a buy when they, they actually publish data? The, the articles on SMCI will be out there. And what they do is they put their, uh, you know, the, the, each article that they write and their opinion, they put it in there. Look at this guy. This guy had it a hold this entire time. He had it as a hold. Then he ups it to a buy. Uh, and, and it's trading at about $1,000 when it's a buy. Um, and, and that was just March 23rd. You can see March 21st. This guy's a hold at 1000 uh, he rated it as a buy back here. Pretty good analysis. This dude has his sell March 15th. It hasn't done well, but he hasn't recovered it um, before then. You look at this. I mean, this guy has a strong buy uh, March 14th at its absolute high. This guy has his sell at the all-time high. This is what you can do. And you can read the articles that they 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 write. 
So that's why I like Seeking Alpha. If you're new, you can read these articles. It's really, really good. Um, Marathon Digital. I wanted to point this out. This is a strong buy in the quant. Uh, super strong buy. I like this one. Uh, this one, you know, Mara. We talked about um, Clean Spark uh, yesterday. CLSK. This is another one. If you look at this quant, uh, this in the quant is, I think it's a hold, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, Charlie loves this one. Uh, he posted a bit video last night about Mara. Uh, I think Mara, uh, you know, one, one thing that I like about Seeking Alpha 2 is I can go down here in Seeking Alpha and I can scroll down. And in case you missed it, uh, there's the most articles for analysis for you. Recently viewed stocks and ETFs with quant ratings. So look, clean house, arse, it, it saves it all for me. So if I looked at it, it tells me, hey, you may want to look at this one because it, look at uh, how good it's been. Uh, you know, some of these that I looked at before for some folks, yeah. Um, but, and then it tells you the latest quant buys, by sectionary. I, it, it just, God, it's so good. Seeking Alpha is so, you could go down a rabbit hole and stay there forever. Palantir dips as Mon Moness cuts rating to sell on valuation. Palantir down about 2% in live trading, uh, down 3%. Uh, I think this one, I, I still say under 20, buy it. It's put in this nice little VWAP down here at 22. You may get down there. It just gave you a buy at 24.57. The MACD kind of just capitulating. The RSI going down. I think if you get down at, at near this 22, if you get a 22 handle on this one, I think you buy it. Even uh, Honestly, even though I think it's expensive, it's got a hold in the uh, the, the quant rating, but I think you buy it. It, 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 it has enough momentum to continue um, going the way that it is. It's a hold. The valuation, remember, we talked about, um, Steve talked about it. There's the peg to B minus. I mean, it's, it's growing faster than its competitors. You know, sector medium is 1.94. This one's trading at 1.59. It's 18% below. So I don't know why the quant doesn't have it as a buy, but hey, I don't know the the, the quant stuff quite as well as Steve does. Bank of America. Uh, this was cut. This is in the core portfolio. And just remember, I'm going over the core portfolio stuff with uh, some of the rating stuff. This was uh, downgraded. They see, uh, let's see, it, they see um, better, uh, better valuation in, I think it's Citibank um, and others. Uh, expects PNC's net income to grow to reemerge in 2024. Um, yeah, yeah. So essentially, Bank of America, it's run. I mean, this is in the core portfolio. I was begging people during uh, back here in October. I said, it's under 30. I said, this is the biggest bank out there. It's going to get up. Well, if you bought it, you know, you didn't even have to time it. You could have bought it when it touched the 200 day. And got some type of confirmation on the 200 day, and and you're up what uh, over 199 bars, about 147 days, 31 percent. This one's been a great one. You know, in, in my mind, I think City offers a, a great opportunity. This one, when you look at long term, it's still recovering. It's just gotten above its 200 day. Um, let's look at the weekly story. Uh, Trend Spider wanted to take me back to the four hour. But there, look at this. I mean, this hasn't even had the golden cross of, of the 50 day. The 50 day is just starting to move positive. This one at all time highs, 81. Do you get back there? I think you could. The algorithm makes you 27% versus buy and hold at 10%. Now, mind you, that's 27 positions over 24 months. Got you in at 54, 63 too much. You still have confirmation. So there, there's banks out there that are still really, really good. In fact, today, I will ruin it, we had a cross-up on uh, XLF. So the financials just got another bullish move up. Look at Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab, the MACD has moved down. You had a buy-in at 64, uh, 62.24 back in February. Did you buy it? I don't know. You know, again, this is where, uh, where, where TrendSpider just comes into play. You can look at these. There is an article here. A conda, a k a n, a k a n. Uh, they just mentioned that they're going to enter Bitcoin and blockchain into the cannabis market. What did this stock do? I think it's up a hundred percent. Let's see. 
it is one of the biggest movers. It's up 56%. Uh, but what I want to really take a look at is I want to take a look at the after hours on this one. Because if we look at the after hours on this, and we're going to go to a five-minute chart, you're going to see when something like this happens, look at that move. That, that was when this article came out at 8 o'clock. Okay, that move is 37%. 37%. It got all the way up here to 33 cents. This is not one you want to play with uh, because I think the float is rather small. Uh, 3 million shares. They are losing money. This is a cannabis one. It's healthcare, specialty, and generic. Uh, there is no insider stuff. There's nothing. This is how a stock can move. Year to date, it's down 41%. Expect this kind of stuff to happen uh, in the cannabis industry as we get more kind of stuff. Um, social requests. I need to blow this one up so I can read it. It came in on email. Uh, Jared, uh, Gary wanted to know, follow up on ARQ, formerly ADES. They've been crushing it. The stock took off after they beat the top and bottom line, delivered their first profitable quarter in uh, Q4 2021. The stock appears to be well positioned to profit from the EPA's uh, I can't even pronounce it. Along with increasing their gross margins, at the time of writing this, they are at $6.83 per share. I'm still holding my original position with an average cost of $2.65. Past week has been rev- relatively flat for the stock, but in one month, it's over 100%. From a technical perspective, where do you see the potential for this stock, and what does it have potential downside look like? To me, it looks like somewhere around the $6 level, but would love your thoughts. I told Jared his thesis on this one better than than I could do because I just don't know this space. Uh, but let's look at ARQ. Um, and I'm going to look at it here uh, in, in TrendSpider first. Uh, we'll look at the chart. Where do I think it's going? Well, let's take a look at a weekly because where do I think it's going? I think it's putting in the, the you're going to see uh, probably $8 be a huge, huge resistance for this stock. Look at where it bounced off. If we just put uh, a, a line at eight dollars. Okay, we're just gonna put. Every time you change a handle, it's usually a resistance. Well, what's happened? Look at that one. Once, twice, three times, four times. It's tried to make it above that eight eight dollar, and it hasn't. It hasn't. So I I don't know if it's gonna get above there, but that's probably your upper resistance. Your bottom resistance for me, if I'm actually looking at it on a weekly. I think your bottom resistance is, you know, your absolute bottom uh, is probably this $2 mark, $2.20. Because look at that that first one where it popped up there and, and you kind of, you know, you could move this one up here even at $2.48 to see that one. Uh, but I would have, st- listen, I'm not investing in this stuff. This is not one that, that even interests me whatsoever. But if you take a look at, we're going to pull this back to kind of the last time it popped up to that $8. The first time it really popped up to that $8 after it really got below it. We're going to take a look at that. Where's the VWAP? Uh, the VWAP is right here at $4.80, where that gap is. So in my mind, look at that volume shelf that it's putting out there. You're putting a volume shelf here at $6.34, between $6.34 and, and, and $6.92. So I, I think it's a great trade. Am I interested in it? No. No. I I have no interest in this one whatsoever. Uh, I believe it's probably going to be a strong buy in this one um, in uh, Seeking Alpha. Let's look at the quant. It's a buy from this guy, a pot at the end of the the gold at the end of the rainbow. Uh, It's a hold in the quant. It's profitability D minus. It's a buy in uh, Wall Street. But we can take a look at the quant rating. Uh, history. It just started getting covered back here at $3.10 and it was a hold at $6. I mean, you've doubled it since then. So I don't know what you want to do, but Jared, in my mind, great trade, absolute great opportunity. I'd just be worried about that $8 mark. I'd probably be putting my stop losses in, to be honest with you, around $6.11 to try and take profits. I, I don't think that this is a company that you want to throw um, you know, a, a ton of money into, but if you know more about that space, have at it. Uh, B33B, uh, what to do, do with my BMR stocks worth eight, $7.80? Um, BMR, this is a um, AI company. It's more hype than anything. What do you do with your stock at $7.80? You get rid of it. <laughs> I mean, if this were me, 
I, I, I'd have sold a long time ago. I would have listened to the algorithm. The algorithm, the four-hour algorithm makes you 184% over 13 months. Where did it tell you to get out? Told you to get out at $8.44. You would have made a great trade on that one. Uh, you know, you've had three losing trades. There's no winners here. Their earnings are coming out on April 9th. Maybe you get some type of uh, hype there. But look at the volume. I mean, there's no volume back here. Then you've got a little hype volume with this. This is all hype. I mean, BMR right now, if we go and look at BMR, uh, I think it's probably going to be a strong buy, to be honest with you, on the quant. Yeah, it's a strong buy on the quant. If you believe, I mean, B, B33B, I would tell you, why did you buy it at $7.80? I mean, was it something that, uh, you know, you you wanted, you thought the AI or was it hype? If you bought it at hype, you should trade it when the hype dies down. If, if you bought it for a trade, trade it. Learn the charts and trade it. There, there is nothing that magical that I'm going to tell you in BMR because I don't study the company. It's not in the core portfolio. It's not something that I absolutely 100% know about, but I can tell you the quant says it's a, it's a strong buy. So if you believe in this company and you know more about it, have at it. I just don't know anything about it. What do you do with it? I'd sell it. You're on the downside of the nine day. Um, you know, e even look at the 65 minute algorithm. And we'll, we'll trade BMR in the 65-minute algorithm. 65-minute algorithm makes you 209% over eight months versus 147%. It got you in at 676. But look, it's just fluttering. There's no real volume. that You can see when the, when the stock goes up, it's all volume-based. So you wait until the next hype trade. And, and, and when, when the volume dies down, this stock just dies down. That is 100% a hype trade. So what do you want to do? I'd sell it. If you believe in it for some other reason, if there's a fundamental reason that you believe in it, have at it. Uh, Taryn Barnes, DJT, thoughts? <laughs> uh, I went over this pretty well. I thought, don't, I mean, don't, I wouldn't even trade it. No reason. Uh, you could should only buy DJT if you bought Trump water. If you didn't die off of Trump water. If you bought Trump wine. Uh, if you went to Trump University and you have that degree hanging on your shelf, buy DJT. If you felt those were good products with good companies, with good management, have at it. Then you can buy DJT. Then you can buy the Trump NFT collection. Then you can buy the Trump sneakers. Now you can buy the new Trump Bible. I went over this yesterday. He has years of grifting people. Uh, look at his casino stock. Uh, I think it was um, 1995, bankrupt by 2000. So look at that. Uh, FYI, uh, Wall Street Bets had a great comment yesterday. Uh, there are uh, Waffle House locations, single Waffle House locations that have more revenue than this company. Not profit, more revenue than this company. It's not even profitable. There is no reason to do get into this. None. If you want to trade it, have at it. Just understand, here's, here's what you have to understand about this one. Uh, so Trump uh, can go uh, to the board of directors. He's got a six-month lockup, but he can go to the board of directors of this company, which, by the way, it's called effing Trump media. He can go to the board of directors and ask them for, for special permission to remove his lockup. Uh, then what do you do? Because if he starts selling, you're going to see this halted. And you're going to see it halted down to, and it's going to get back to $2. It's not worth it. It is 100% not worth it. Unless you're, you're just, hey, I want to throw some money and I want to put it into Trump's pockets. That's exactly what you're doing. For me, if I wanted to put money in Trump's pockets, I'd donate to his campaign and at least get a freaking write-off on it. That's what I would do. Scott. Uh, SLB from Facebook, once uh, SLB. This is uh, formerly Schlumberger. I think it's still called Schlumberger. I don't know. Energy company. Uh, algorithm makes you 35% versus 30% buy and hold. Just had a golden cross on the four hour. I mean, it, it, you're, this is energy. There's no reason not to get into this one uh, if you like the company. Are, are you going back to all-time highs? I don't know. I mean, this one at all-time highs back here in 2017, you were at 84. 
Uh, I don't think the justification for that one g- comes back. But on the weekly, looks like you're still down. I mean, you're 50 days moving positive. Um, you know, on the weekly, you're moving positive. 200 days moving positive. Everything seems to be going well. It's an energy stock. It's a good one. William, yo, Gary, Pan W, just going to hang out and consolidate here forever. What do your charts whisper to you? Pan W, this one I am still holding. I'm thinking of changing my um, my main investment in cybersecurity from Pan W to CyberStrike. You had the death cross here. 285, it is capitulating. It's on the downside. Pelosi pumped this one. And that was part of the problem is you saw this Pelosi pump back here, I believe. Um, and then it got into earnings and then they said, hey, you know, our strategy may not be working, but we think that it's working. And then CrowdStrike came out and said, hey, you know, everybody that's getting off of Pan W, they're coming to us. That's essentially what happened. So I don't know that it's necessarily going to capitulate around here forever. Uh, I see the MACD moving positive, but this hasn't moved positive. The RSI kind of just hanging out. Um, cybersecurity, you want to have access to it, but look at the weekly. I mean, look at how extended this stock actually was. So I don't know where it goes. I ha- have a big position in it. I'd like to sell it at 300, uh, because I think that's where the, the pop really happens. But in my mind, I think, you know, it, it, again, it's a good one. I, I just want to build my position in CrowdStrike because I think that's that's more the retail one where people are really pouring their money into. I just don't know that CrowdStrike hasn't run too much. Uh, I did start a position in CrowdStrike, I think, at 305. And we're at three uh, 325, I think, right now, 325.97. And I've said with CrowdStrike, you're seeing a capitulation right here, and you're right in the middle. So if you want to buy at 325, have at it. I don't know. I my guess is that this one continues higher. Um, I just think that you've you, you you look the MACD coming down. The stock didn't come down that much. This stock went down here. I mean, it, geez, it, it got down to two seventy three. So if you can get this under three hundred, have at it. If you can't, I mean, you know, Palo Alto Networks. It is what it is. Taylor. Uh, asked me first off, this is from email. Thank you for all that you do. I'm new to this and love all the insight I'm getting as I learn the lingo and trends to look for while I've made some mistakes along the way. I'm happy to have you around and lean on with all your resources for us. New guys, just starting out with small portfolios. Are are there certain things for us to look at, look for, is there a trading guide that you would recommend? Again, thank you for all that you do. I listen every day. Uh, I'm getting my coworkers into this. So Taylor, I mean, I, Listen, Zip Trader has a great playlist. If you go to YouTube uh, and, and just type in Zip Trader, he's got a playlist of how to trade stocks, um, and it, that's technical. And and so remember, there are two types of trading: there is technical and there's fundamental. And 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 what you want to focus on first, in my mind, are the tech are, are the fundamentals, and that's why I suggest. Uh, seeking alpha premium because that's fundamental investing. You t- you find your favorite stocks and and you look at their uh, their quant. You know, Alpha Picks. If you're brand new, Alpha Picks is a great one because that teaches you fundamental how to look at these things. Um, you know what what Zip Trader tell, tells you is technical, and you can go over here to Zip Trader, and you can go to playlists. And he's, I think he's got two or three playlists, getting started trading tutorials. There's about 70 videos in here. And he does a great job of teaching you all the chart stuff that you want to look at. Now, the other thing that I would tell you is look at the MACD. Look at the MACD. Go and do, do use, I use YouTube to learn about the MACD. I use YouTube to learn about RSI. I use YouTube to learn which uh, uh, moving averages I liked about Bollinger Bands. I include all of this in the newsletter. There's no, uh, you know, the newsletter has a paid section if you wanted education. This is everything that I trade with. All of this is is everything that I trade with. So there is nothing hidden. There's nothing, you know, there's my setup, confirmation, MACD, button hook, cross up, uh, RSI. This is all the lingo. So if you want, I mean, this is the paid newsletter. If you want to support me, paid newsletter is probably the best way to go. Um, and, and you can read about that. But in my mind, YouTube, the, the, there is no reason. The only reason to pay, to pay for a course is, um, you know, you, you want it commercial free. So find the cheapest course that you can find. 
um, you know, on Skillshare or something like that, if you want to go that route. But YouTube has plenty of stuff. Look at my uh, my screen here. You know, go and look up the 200-day EMA. Go and look up the 50-day EMA. You'll find plenty of stuff on YouTube. There is no trading guide that's going to get you in here. But if you are new, what I would suggest is while you're learning on YouTube, go over to Weeble. Sign up for Weeble. Use the fourth link here. Get some free stocks. And then download their, uh, their, their trading platform on your desktop. Or use it on your phone. But paper trade, what paper trading is, is you just basically get into the stock and it's it's play money. And you, you look at how you do and you journal. When you, when you journal, I suggest Savvy Trader. Savvy Trader, you can open up your own portfolio and you can paper trade over here as well. Uh, basically, when you buy a stock, you don't have to do it. It's not connected to your portfolio. So you can buy a stock, you can paper trade over here. But start paper trading. Understand where the charts are letting you go. Understand where you're, what you're actually looking at. Just paper trade. And, 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 and that's how you learn. Don't go and look for a course where you're looking for the lingo and stuff like that. All of that, if, if there's something that I say uh, that you want to look up, go to Investopedia. Go to my newsletter. Um, you know, ask me a question. I'm here. So absolutely, there are stuff. Um, oh, Taylor says, P.S., what do you think of Riot with crypto going up? Uh, it's, a, it's a minor. You're fine. Trade it. I, I, I think if you like crypto, buy the freaking crypto. Don't buy the, the, the minor. You trade the minor. But buy the crypto. Own, own the crypto. Uh, okay, let's look at some scans that, that show bullish. First off, Apple. We talked about how Apple got us out of the, the, the algorithm, it got you back in 173.41. It's trading at 171. I think anything down here at 170, I think you're fine. You know, if you get it with a 1.6 handle, that's even better. But, you know, again, you want to take a look at that stuff. Um, oh, and by the way, why, why I suggest the core portfolio stuff, um, you know, take a look at the core portfolio. I went over it yesterday, but when you compare the core, the core portfolio is just... 35 positions, um, and, and we're going to look at the uh, the total, gainers total. Uh, and, and SMCI, obviously the big winner. NVIDIA, 100%. Uber, 83%. Meta, 73%. Lily. All I did was when I moved stocks into the core portfolio, I started this in J uh, June of last year. So it hasn't even been a year, but when I started in June of last year, I basically put these 100%. I bought uh, 100 shares of each stock. It's equal weighted. There is nothing to this. That you know, if one goes up more than the other, great. But you know what I uh, what I spent the most money on? You can look at these uh, allocation. Uh, we can look at the allocation. SMCI. Uh, no, where's the cost? Uh, market cap. Uh, no, I guess. Let me see table. Um, what did I buy? Yeah, average cost, total cost. Let's look at the total cost. Because if we uh, just rate this by total cost, look at Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly cost me 20, uh, let's see, uh, $54,000 because I bought it 100 shares at $54,000. Today, that's $78,000. It's a great return, 45%. Uh, you know, you didn't have to buy 100 shares of this. Costco, I bought 100 shares at 520 bucks. Look at that return. 40%. United Health, I bought 100 shares of this at 46. That's only 4% gain. Nvidia, I bought 100 shares of this at 434. The gain is 109%. Uh, QQQ, I bought 100 shares of this. It's 40,000 bucks. I bought this, um, you know, what, I think back in December or something. You know, it, it was very recently. VOO, I'm up 20% on. You know, losers Tesla. I bought 100 shares at 270 bucks. I just put it in there. I have losers in here. Apple, it's down 7%. I bought 100 shares at 185. I'm not buying more, but it, it this shows you the power of having a mixed portfolio where there are some winners and some losers. You don't have to be in and out of everything. So Tyler, I would say, you know, hey, just just look at a portfolio. Get look at the core portfolio here. And pick, you know, four or five stocks that you like. And then track them and paper trade them. Paper trade them. Until you get used to trading, I would suggest ETFs. 
Uh, BITC, this is Bitwise, uh, 55.98. Are we going for another run on Bitcoin? Look at how low that MACD is. Maybe. I mean, this could could take off. Right now, you're at 54.76. You don't have confirmation. I'd probably wait. I mean, maybe you know, you might get a four handle on this one, but Bitcoin, I think it's I think it's going to hover around that um, seventy thousand dollar mark. Uh, I will put all of the 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 scans in the the newsletter. Uh, one thing I want to point out is SMMT. Uh, we found this because there was a huge insider buy uh, about maybe six months ago or so, um, and it's traded down. I mean, this one trades down hugely. Algorithm got you in at 372. Ironically, uh, on the, this day, it was March 27th, yesterday, um, in the afternoon. Today, it's at $4.40. I don't even know. Was there news on this one? Let's see. Let's look at uh, Seeking Alpha SMMT. This is uh, Summit Therapeutics. Uh, it's a hold, C valuation. Stock plunges 28%. That's on February 20th. I don't know that there's any news necessarily on this. We can look at this. Um, it's not making money. Just, just be aware. This is not one that I would, I would trade this one, not, uh, not necessarily buy it and hold it. Uh, oh, look, the CEO bought 24, uh, $201,000 value, 24 million shares for 201,000. This was, uh, uh, is this SMT? Yeah. Summit Therapeutics, huh? That's why it's up so much. We had a big buy here. $3.72. Um, number of shares total, $24 million. <laughs> That's huge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, two buys. That's why that one's up. Uh, but that was one that we started tracking because there was a billionaire who uh, owns this one. He had huge buys in this. So uh, take a look at that one. Ba -ba -ba. Leverage ETFs. We got a cross up here on SQQQ. One of the reasons why I tell you to be careful with holding a triple levered ETF uh, over a four day weekend is because this one is now showing a little bit of a bullish tendency. $10.40, you're trading at $10.42. Uh, this doesn't mean buy it. I am not a fan of, of, of going short on anything. It just is an indication that, hey, there might be some uh, some indication that the you know pal may say something that isn't good for the market, and then Monday you show up, and all of a sudden TQQQ that was at 61 is now at 55. Uh, FNGD Fang Index three times leverage. Uh, this is uh, the inverse. So again, this is bearish on Fang 36.22. You're trading at 36.52. Again, kind of pointing in the the bearish direction right now. DRN. This is the real estate bull. Uh, conversely to the bear, this is the bull. $9.69 for the real estate. Uh, SDS, which I think is short, the um, ultra short. Yes, this is the S&P 500. Got you in at $25.11. So uh, conversely, SPXU, which is the ultra pro short on the S&P 500. I think this is a smaller one or a bigger one. I'm not quite sure. Got you in at six dollars and fifty one cents. You're at six forty six. There are a couple of ETFs that are uh, that are thing too. Spider sectors are important to keep an eye on. XLF. I talked about it when I talked about City and stuff like that. XLF. This one uh, just huge. I mean, this one has just been a enormous, enormous winner at forty one ninety five. Uh, it gets you in. This is just another uh, extension. Look at that MACD crossing up. RSI is a little high. I would probably buy some banks instead of that one, uh, but look at what what banks are in there. XLRE, the real estate sector. This one, I showed this one on a. Well, I was looking at this. Look at that bounce right off the 200-day, 39.27. You're at 39.51. If we look at the weekly, uh, you're using that 200-day on the weekly as resistance. That's at forty dollars. So is this the time where it bounces up over that 200-day? Look at this. The last time that did that, January 23rd, it held it for one week. So maybe you want to wait for a couple of weeks to see if this can hold. There are volume shelves up here at 46. So don't think that people are just you know uh, getting out of this one. There are some pretty big volume shelves. I mean, the biggest volume shelves are down here at 37. If we pull this back, we're going to pull this back to COVID. Let's pull this back to COVID. Uh, that's 2020. And let's see, most people are holding in here. There's a lot of people holding up here. So that's going to bring that stock up. 
At some point in time, this gets a push up. Uh, BRK.B. This is Berkshire Hathaway. I have this in the spider sectors just because it's a good uh, indication of where the market is. Look, we talked about how this is, that was providing support down there. Now, the MACD is crossing up. The the danger you have here is Warren Buffett's old. I mean, you know, it's going to be a pullback if he passes away because Charlie Munger just passed away. XLI. This one's going for another run. This is industrials. This one's going for another run. Uh, you can see one 112 was the cross up. Now it, it's at 125. Uh, if we look at a weekly on this one, you're at all time highs. XLI. I mean, it's it's just again this the the industrial sector is going for a run and it's continuing to go for a run. One that is recovering uh, is XLU. And this one gets you in while you've been in. Uh, you got a nice ten percent move here since February, um, and and you're probably going to get up to sixty six level. I mean, if we look at a weekly, um, you're just getting up to the two hundred day. And, and I've I've identified this range before. That range on the weekly uh, before you can take a look at it. This is the long term range right here. That's absolutely a long term range. And you're looking at 35% uh, 35% range, but you're just getting to your 200 day. That $66 level is going to provide some resistance. I think utilities come back. I think as rates come down, utilities start to come up. Just my thought. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Remember, the spring sales are going on. I will have a paid newsletter this weekend. I may have a paid um, Zoom meeting. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, thanks, you guys. Okay, take care. Bye. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears. Guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. and fears.